the complete health history. Remember um, subjective and objective data from some previous chapters. The complete health history is an example of subjective data along with uh, the patient interview. Combined with the physical exam and any lab or diagnostic tests, this forms a complete database. The complete health history is often done using a checklist uh, that the patient fills out prior to the visit um, or prior to the examination of the patient, and then that checklist is discussed uh, with the patient. So the objectives of this chapter, we're going to talk about the purpose, uh, different categories of information, and what is included in each of those categories. We'll talk about how we describe patient symptoms and some ways to uh, remember all the questions we need to ask about a patient symptom. We'll talk about the difference uh, between signs and symptoms as well. Okay, so the main uh, categories of data that we are going to collect on a patient are listed here. Uh, they're also listed uh, in your book, and we're going to uh, go through those in detail in the following slides. So the first one is biographic data, and you can see all the things that are included here. Um, they include things like uh, race, occupation, uh, name and address, just uh, some very generic information. We want to be um, aware of the source of the history. Where, Who is giving us this information? Is it the patient themselves? Um, is the patient unconscious? Do we have to have a relative or a friend um, give us as much history as they know? Are we using an interpreter if it's someone that speaks a different language? We want to be concerned with the reliability of the informant. If we have someone that throughout the interview uh, they respond differently to the same question, then the information they're giving us may not be reliable. If the first time we talk to them about uh, being married, they say, oh yes, I'm married, you know, this is my spouse's name, and then later on they say, no, I'm not married, my wife died, or um, they're, they're giving different answers to the same question, then we need to be concerned that maybe the information they're giving us about their medical history may also be uh, unreliable. And then we want to be uh, considerate to those that are acutely ill, um, a patient that's in pain or sick, um, may not really be interested in giving you a lot of information about their history. Um, we really need to deal with the acute needs of um, a sick patient or a patient that's experiencing a health crisis. We really need to deal with those acute needs and get their condition stable before we uh, spend a lot of time discussing their history. So another uh, category is the reason for seeking care. Uh, this is always in the patient's own words. Uh, this is not why we think the patient came. This is the, the nurse or the uh, interviewer asking the patient, why did you come here today to the hospital, to the doctor's office, uh, to the urgent care center? Why are you here? And so it's usually put uh, in quotation marks. You can see uh, that both of these uh, examples of the reason for seeking care are in uh, quotation marks. Some other definitions I want you to be aware of uh, are symptom and sign. A symptom is something that is subjective. You, as the examiner, cannot verify that the patient is experiencing a symptom. So a symptom, an example, would be a headache, um, a patient that's experiencing nausea, or uh, pain. Pain is subjective. A sign is something that we can see on physical exam, or we can tell that they're experiencing it based on uh, laboratory reports. Or um, something, an example of a sign would be uh, an elevated blood pressure. We can take the patient's blood pressure, and anyone that takes that blood pressure is going to get a similar number, an elevated blood pressure. Um, you know, they're uh, someone that's vomiting, okay? Anyone that comes in the room <laughs> at the appropriate time is going to see this patient vomiting. That's a sign. Um, redness on the patient's skin, uh, a lump somewhere, uh, and a wound, 
things that you can verify uh, as the examiner with either physical exam or in a laboratory report is considered a sign. Um, another category of information is your present health or the history of present illness. If a patient comes in and they're getting a checkup or a physical exam for sports, um, then it's their present health. You know, how do they, how do they feel right now? Um, if it's a history of present illness, then we're going to talk about uh, an illness. So maybe they came in with the flu or... Uh, they have pneumonia, or they broke their arm, um, then that's the difference between those two. And this is going to include the patient's symptoms. And when we categorize their symptoms, uh, when we document their symptoms, there's some things we want to ask them uh, about those symptoms. The first column is uh, one way of discussing a patient's uh, symptoms. The second column is a different way that's a little easier to remember. It has a mnemonic, uh, PQRST, and a, a lot of times they add U at the end. So the first thing we want to ask um, are words that begin with P. So provocative or palliative. What makes the symptom worse? And let's use pain as an example. What makes the pain worse? Provocative. What makes the pain better? Palliative. Um, Q, we want to talk about the quality of the pain. What does it feel like? Uh, is it burning, sharp, stabbing, aching, cramping? Um, and the quantity of the pain. Pain is something that we can rate on a scale. A very popular pain scale is 0 to 10. Um, 0 is no pain and 10 is the worst pain you've ever experienced. R is for region or radiation. So where do you feel the pain? Um, you know, is it in your abdomen? Is it in your arm? Uh, and does the pain radiate anywhere? Does it travel? Um, certain um, disease processes, like um, we could talk about a heart attack, heart attack pain, uh, they feel it in the middle of their chest, but it may radiate up into their jaw and down their arm. And so it's important to know where the pain is. And is it traveling? Does it seem to go other places? Um, S is the severity, and I mixed up quantity and severity. Sorry, quantity is how often. Well, we'll just go with severity is um, how bad is it. Um, and that would be the 0 to 10 scale. Okay, uh, timing. When did the pain start? That's the onset. How long does it last? Um, that's the duration, and frequency. How often are you experiencing this pain? Uh, when does it happen? Some, you know, maybe a patient broke their arm, so the timing, you know, their arm started hurting uh, when they fell, and it's hurt uh, the entire time since they fell, uh, and the frequency, it's, it's just always been there. Sometimes pain occurs um, with certain activities. Um, chest pain is an example of something. Uh, sometimes people have chest pain with certain activities and that can help us figure out what's going on uh, with the patient to know the frequency of it. Um, and then U is understanding the patient's perception. How does the illness or injury or pain um, affect the patient? How is it affecting their, their daily living? Okay. We are also concerned with the patient's past health, um, and so most questionnaires that they fill out in a doctor's office or when someone is admitted to the hospital, um, there's a, a place for them to talk about any serious illnesses, any times they've been in the hospital, any operations they've had. Um, we usually want to make sure, especially children, are up to date on their immunizations. Um, older adults, there's some immunizations that older adults need to, um, it's important to keep them up to date on their uh, examinations. The last time they saw a doctor. Um, when we get down to allergies, allergies are very important. Um, a lot of patients have medication allergies and it's important to document their reaction because a reaction to an allergen can be anything from my eyes water, um, I get a rash, um, maybe itching, all the way to anaphylactic shock where a patient 
uh, stops breathing or their airway closes off uh, and they're unable to breathe. So it's really important, any, any allergies, especially medications, we want to make sure we document their reaction uh, to that allergen. And then uh, we want a list of the current medications they're on, the doses, um, all the information they can give us about the medications they're on, um, because someone in the hospital setting is going to look at that list of medications they're on at home and compare it to the medications they're on in the hospital because uh, there could definitely be some changes uh, based on their illness or, you know, maybe some of those medications uh, need to be stopped. Uh, sometimes medications can cause uh, complications and need to be stopped. Okay, family history is also very important. Usually we want to know um, about the history of someone's parents. If there's any kind of uh, chronic diseases that are present in the family, things like um, heart disease, high blood pressure, stroke, diabetes, um, and did anyone die of, we want to know, like parents, we want to know what they uh, died from. And we want to know the health of those living uh, in the household. Uh, there is something called a pedigree or a genogram, and there is an example in your book. We are not going to do that as part of health assessment, but I believe uh, that's part of your community course. Okay, culture and genetics. Uh, with new immigrants, there are some specific things uh, that are additional that we might want to know about. Um, where is the patient from? Because that may indicate their risk for certain diseases. Um, how long have they been in the United States? Uh, do they have any religious needs um, that maybe aren't being met uh, in the United States? Maybe. Uh, that aren't available or they haven't found yet. Uh, the BCG vaccine is a tuberculosis vaccine that's given in a lot of countries um, that have a higher rate of tuberculosis than the United States, and it does cause a positive skin test. So if we are uh, testing people to see if they've been exposed to TB, this vaccine automatically says yes, they've been exposed to it because they've had this vaccine. Um, and then there may be differences in the way that culture or that country um, perceives health and illness. Um, in some countries, it is very normal for women uh, to lose children in through miscarriage, through um, childhood diseases, um, and they, in in some cases, through in childbirth, um, in some cases, they don't name children until you know they're. Uh, until they've made it a little while. Um, and it, it may not be, uh, it, it may be different, they may have a different reaction uh, than someone in the United States would have um, in, in losing a child or, or their child being ill. Um, and then there may be certain things that are uh, not allowed according to their religion, um, foods or drinks. I know specifically uh, Jehovah's Witnesses and that's a specific religion uh, in the United States, and they do not uh, consent to blood transfusions. Okay, review of systems. This is another way. Um, this is getting information about each body system, and this is roughly head to toe. Um, again, this is we're still in subjective data. This is the patient's perception of any problems. Uh, with these body systems, a lot of times there's a form you fill out and you check uh, if you've had symptoms uh, in any of these uh, body systems. And then here's uh, some additional body systems. And it's important if you don't know what these words are, uh, that you start to learn uh, what these words are, what they mean, which systems of the body uh, they correspond to. But all of this, the review of systems, the health history, all of this is usually done um, prior to an exam. A lot of times it's a checklist that's filled out by the patient and then discussed with the healthcare provider. Uh, functional assessment and activities of daily living. Uh, how is the illness or injury or the patient's current state of health? Are they able to care for themselves? And these are some of the, the ways that we think about patients taking care of themselves. 
Um, does their illness affect their self-esteem, their ability to exercise or uh, to be active, to sleep, to eat? Um, to Does it change their interpersonal relationships with people in their family or their friends? Um, does it affect their spirituality, their coping, uh, their personal habits? Are they experiencing problems uh, with alcohol or drugs? Um, are there environmental hazards that we need to be aware of? Uh, maybe you know, things, um, you know, where they live. Uh, maybe they live in a, a lower socioeconomic uh, neighborhood. There may be issues with safety, uh, problems with heating or cooling a home, uh, transportation. Um, intimate partner violence is a really big uh, issue. Uh, you know, it's something, you know, that we need to ask about. And then are they exposed uh, through their occupation to uh, health hazards. That would be occupational health. And then perception of health. Uh, these are just some questions we can ask patients about their health uh, if we want to get more about uh, their perceptions of, you know, what is health, um, what do they expect from healthcare providers, you know, what concerns do they have, just to, to really understand the patient's perception. Okay, and then here's some key points. These are part of every um, PowerPoint, and they're just kind of a quick summary of some important things in the chapter.